How did the USA pull off one of football history's greatest shocks at the 1950 World Cup? In 1950, the world was still recovering from the death and destruction of nearly six years of World War II. Sport was a vehicle to rebuild the world, starting with the 1948 Austerity Olympics, held on a minimal budget in London as countries pulled together to enjoy the festivities once more. It was football's turn to get back to competing on an international stage, this time in Brazil, as it hosted the fourth edition of the FIFA World Cup. The special tournament is remembered for a number of reasons, one particular gem being Joe Gaitchens' miracle on grass. Of the 16 qualified teams, just 13 would make the journey to Brazil. Notably for the British home nations, they would finally join the competition. All had refused to play in pre-World War II tournaments, with FA chairman Charles Sutcliffe famously branding the idea as a joke in 1934. Both Scotland and England were eligible to play in Brazil, after FIFA agreed that the top two from the British Home Championships would qualify, but only England would make the journey. The Scottish FA declared that they would attend as victors only of the Home Championships, but after coming second, they refused to take up their place. Scotland captain George Young reportedly begged the SFA to change their mind, and the plea was even supported by England captain Billy Wright, but Secretary George Graham would not budge. England's first match saw them beat Chile 2-0, Stan Mortensen and Wilf Mannion getting their names on the score sheet. The challenge or seeming walkover of the USA would await. The feelings pre-match were summed up honestly by US coach Bill Jeffrey, the Scottish-born manager having only been appointed two weeks before the World Cup, who said, We have no chance. We are sheep ready to be slaughtered. On the 29th of June, America chose not to send a single journalist to cover the fixture, other than a reporter on holiday. So, at the Estadio Independencia in Belo Horizonte, Walter Winterbottom's men walked out ready to brush aside the USA. The 10,000 plus spectators that day saw an England side featuring Tottenham's Alf Ramsey, Wolves' Billy Wright, Preston's Tom Finney, Portsmouth's Jimmy Dickinson and Blackpool's Mortensen. The opponents were inexperienced and filled with part-timers led by the Haitian-born forward Gaitjens, who would finish his career with just one goal in three international appearances. England dominated proceedings as expected, but in the 38th minute, Walter Barr took a shot from range. Gaitjens connected with his head as the ball flew goalward and the touch was enough to beat Wolves goalkeeper Bert Williams, putting the USA 1-0 up. Future England manager Ramsey would later claim that Gaitjens' touch was accidental, stating that he ducked to avoid the ball. Accidental or not, it was the only goal of the game. Credit was also given to US goalkeeper Frank Borgie, who made a string of miraculous saves. This truly was the miracle on grass. The game stunned the British press, some even printing the score as 10-1, believing the news from across Brazil to be a misprint. The loss to the 500-1 outsiders was called an unbelievable defeat, with the Birmingham Daily Gazette marking a black day for England. Things were to get worse for England just three days later, as another defeat came against the Spanish. This time, a 1-0 defeat would send England home in shame from their first World Cup. For the USA, the victory would go down as one of the country's greatest in its history, and still to this day, they hold an impressive record as never been beaten by England at a World Cup. As the players were carried off the field by the fans, one thing was for sure, this truly was a miracle on grass. Thank you so much for listening to this video by the Football History Boys. Please like and subscribe. If you want to see us do more, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.